The fourth album for this Canadian quartet has been a long time coming, but it was finally released and the guys couldn't be happier. Hi, I'm Rebecca Braden and welcome to WatchMojo.com. And today we're speaking with Default. I don't want to see you waiting. I've already come too far away. So why don't we start with the origin story of Default? Uh, we went so long ago, do you remember? <laughs> yeah, 10 years ago, yeah. We went to high school together, same with our drummer Danny, and uh, I used to watch them play with a different singer, and they wanted to start something new, so that's it. Well, this is not for real, afraid to feel. How do you think the music has evolved since you started out? I don't know, every time you go in the studio, you learn a couple of new tricks from guys you've worked with or whatever. Like, I don't know, you pick up a couple of things as you go by, so it's not like a... I don't say like we've evolved like into some new spiritual, spiritual land of this. I said no, you just get better at songwriting, right? What would you say is the defining element or signature of Default? Well, it's always generally the voice of someone singing. So the only thing you can be really distinct. One thing we like to rep, you know represent is is the records really well live. Maybe I didn't do enough to hold on to you. A lot of the songs on the new album are very personal. Is there ever a point when you're like, maybe this shouldn't go on the album? There's a song on the record uh, that's kind of dedicated to my son. I'm kind of, it's about me and his mom's divorce and stuff. Something he can listen to on later on in life and kind of understand where my headspace was. But it's a song that, yeah, that one's a very, very personal one. And I don't know if we'll ever play that one live because it's pretty, yeah. Now, you guys had trouble nailing down a release date for your most recent album. Why don't you tell us a bit more about that story? Basically, the record label, um, we were signed out of the States there. They filed for Chapter 11 protection and they didn't get it, so they had to go through all the auctions of all their stuff. So our contract was one of them. And yeah, we just had to wait for these court proceedings to be done and all these different dates shifting. And, and Eventually, everything landed up on EMI Canada. Over with and done. Took about two years. Did that affect the band dynamic at all? Because, I mean, a lot of bands might not even make it through that. We really liked the record that we did. We felt it was the best stuff we came up with. And, you know, we wanted to give it the, on a shot just to see what it, what it would do, you know. It would kill it would kill the breakup and then have this great record that all of a sudden you're, you're broken up. And people are like, oh, you should have released that. Yeah, if it wasn't a record we were proud of, we would definitely have maybe ended up in a different space. A couple of your songs were featured in video games. Uh, what do you think are today's musicians' most important marketing tools? So you use anything you can because you can't use record sales are all going down, so it's they got to use every any other way to reach reach kids with music, right? Whether reaching out to them by Facebook or Twitter or anything, so they get to know the band a little bit better. Tattoo it on your ass and walk around, I guess. Yeah, yeah there you go. Anything, yeah. If I had two bands kind of up in the air, and I was really into both of them, but I would definitely gravitate the one that I could learn more about and get more involved. So it makes sense. What can we expect from you guys in the future? Hopefully more, yeah, more music. We, that's what we're just we're trying to introduce them back to the world that we're, we're, we're still here. It took some time, now I know. Thanks very much, guys. Thank You're you. welcome.